So we're going to talk on character. Can somebody tell me what is character? What is character? What do you think? Do you recognize character? Do you recognize good character or bad character when you see it? How would you define character? Consistent behavior, okay. In the back. I did not hear, can somebody repeat that? Okay. Let's look at that in just a second. So let's remember the three C's, character, competency, chemistry, yes. Oh, we have a microphone, excellent. Character, competency, and chemistry. Remember, character, plus competency, plus chemistry, equals what? Credibility. What is credibility? If somebody is credible, what, what does that mean? Reliable, trustworthy, right? If somebody who tells you something, but you don't think they're credible, you know that they are a liar or they have lied in the past. When they tell you something, are you going to believe them? No. If somebody comes up to you and tells you something, but you don't know them, you don't know if they're credible or not, are you going to believe them at first? No. We only believe when there's some kind of a relationship and they have proven themselves credible. You see, a lot of times we, we want to preach to the world, but we're not always credible. How do I know that? I have seen that, I've seen this before. We pray for the URA that the U, everybody say, I love you, Pastor Glenn. I wanna make sure we do that, okay? <laughs> Because you know, iron sharpens iron, right? You know the scripture? Is that painful? So I might step on some toes this morning. Is that gonna be okay? Will you still love me? I, I promise I love you back. Sometimes we pray that the URA, oh Lord, we pray for the URA, that it would receive everything that it is due. But we don't give the URA from our own our own paycheck. Does that happen here? No, it happens in the other churches, not here. Sometimes we pray, Lord, root out corruption from our nation. But maybe there's some corruption here. You see, we want things to be better out there we don't want to deal with it here. If we change the heart of a nation, we will change the what? The nation. Where's the heart of the nation? Right here. So before we pray for others, where do we need to first deal with? Right here. James says, don't merely look at the, at the word of God and deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Right? So this morning, we're going to talk on character. You can go to the next slide, please. Or press the space bar. So like I said, we're going to talk about character, competency, and chemistry. Because combined, they create what? Credibility. I want you and I want me to be credible. I want when I say something that people would listen and say, oh, that is a trustworthy man. Oh, that is a trustworthy woman. I need to listen to what they're saying. 
Combine equals credibility. What does credibility does? It opens the door to what? And then I can begin to speak into somebody's life, right? And then they will what? They will listen. Okay, next slide. I want you to remember, defeat isn't making mistakes. Defeat is not learning from them. Does anybody make a mistake here? Okay, we are all one. I make mistakes. I sin. I'm being honest and transparent with you. I blow it every day. I wish it wasn't that case. And I'm working on, on, on loving God more and allowing his love to change and transform me. So I want you to give yourselves a little bit of grace. I want you to give grace to other people. Defeat is not making mistakes. Defeat is what? Not learning from them. Amen? All right, next slide. Is everybody understanding me okay? Am I talking slow enough? Is my accent okay? We're okay? Does everybody still love me? I love you too. <laughs> So what is character? We, I asked this question earlier. Character is, it's your personality. What else? What else is it? You can press the space bar. It is your beliefs. What are beliefs? What you hold true. It is your, your values. Your values. What you consider or rate very highly. What do you value? Do you value honor? Do you value truth? What is it you value? Next. Morals. Morals. What are morals? It's what actions are acceptable and are not acceptable. This is a process. This is, this is, why, this is why we have the Bible. It's to, it's to help us to know what it means to love God, right? If you try to live by the law, I'm here to tell you, you will fail. If you live to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and your neighbors yourself, you will succeed. So then what's the question? What does love mean? Next one. So morals, what actions are acceptable and not? Ethics. What is good and bad? What are your ethics? So we're talking about what? We're talking about character. And we're defining what character is. Because it's, it's sometimes we know what a word is, but it's hard, it's hard to, to, to come up with a definition. And I find, for me, it helps if I have a definition, if I can understand that word a little bit better, right? Beliefs, values, morals, and ethics. These are your what? Your character. Next slide. Oh, wait, right there. Okay. In Proverbs, it says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Where does your character exist? Where does your character exist? There's, there's a hint. It's up there on the screen. It's, it's in this yellow-orange kind of box. Where does your character exist? Oh, I don't think you're convinced. Where does your character exist? Heart. Everybody say heart. What are you going to guard above everything else? My wallet. My stuff. My what? My heart. Because that's where we live life, right? We live life out of our heart, not what we profess. I can tell you one thing and go do something different, right? All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. I make mistakes. So many, many years ago, I was in the U.S. Army. That's me, the one that has a little bit more hair than I do now. I have a lot less hair now. I was a flight crew chief on Black Hawk helicopters. And you might say, 
Wow, what is that? Let me explain. So as a flight crew chief, that meant I'm a mechanic. So when the helicopter breaks, I fix it. I do inspections on the helicopter, and I'm also a crew member. I'm not the pilot, but I sit in the back and I, I fly on the helicopters. That's what I did for many years. So one of the things about helicopters is they shake. Shake your neighbor's chair. What do you think? That's kind of what it's like to fly on a helicopter. It shakes a lot. What do you think happens to metal if it's shaken a lot? What do you think happens to the mechanics of a, of, of a machine if it shakes a lot? Things get to be a little loose. Metal actually begins to tear. Hose pipes begin to break. So every 10 flight hours, I had to do this inspection. I would start at the front of the helicopter, and I would look at just about everything, go all the way to the very end of the helicopter. So every 10 flight hours, what's a flight hour? That means when we're in the air, the timer starts click ticking. So every 10 hours that we're in the air, or every 14 calendar days. So every 14 days or every 10 hours, I had to stop. It took me about four hours to do a complete inspection. Can you imagine looking at your vehicle to every 10 hours or every 14 days? Doesn't it look the same? After a while, it's like, yep, the car is still there. There's one, two, three, four tires. Uh, let me look inside. Yep, there's the steering wheel. I don't need to look at it anymore. I saw it last week. I saw it the week before. It's fine. Does that ever happen here? I have a car. I understand. Sometimes I forget to look at it to, to check the fluids, to make sure everything is okay. So, in the Army, we write down everything. When I do any maintenance or any inspections, I write down everything. I removed these screws and I took off this panel so I could look inside. And then I write, I, re, I put the panel back and I tightened up the screws. I opened this up and I looked inside, then I shut it. I write down everything. And you know, every time I write something down, I had to write, I had to sign my name. You, Ugandans are experts at signing your name, right? You, you take whole classes on how to sign your name. <laughs> right? I'm amazed. I am horrible at writing my name. We don't do that in America. So we had to do this inspection all the time. We could fly two days in a row, then I would do an inspection. And maybe three days in a row, then I would do an inspection. And then we didn't fly for a little while. Then I would do an inspection because it has been 14 days. And then we would fly a little bit more, and then I was doing another inspection. After a while, the helicopter is there. Yes, it's good, right? And I had to sign my name that I did this inspection. Very commonplace. I can guarantee you it happens here in Uganda because I know it happens in America. So my sergeant one time, my boss, said, Bros, I want you to go do an inspection of that helicopter. I say, okay, I will go do it. I waited about 45, 50 minutes, signed everything I needed to sign, and it came back in. And my sergeant said, Bros, did you really do that inspection? I said, yeah. Do you see my, my signature? It's right there. He said, Bros, it's only been 45 minutes. How could you do that inspection? I said, oh, Sergeant, everybody does this. And I was thinking, so do you, because I've seen you do the very same thing. I didn't say that out loud. Don't say that out loud. Everybody does this. And you know, when he told me, it was not his voice, it was the Holy Spirit that was speaking through him. He didn't know that. He was not born again. 
but the Holy Spirit spoke through him. He, he said, bros, you can be like everybody else, or you can actually do what it is you said you did. And you know what? That hit me. That hit me. Ladies and gentlemen, you can do like everybody else. And I don't care if they're born again or not born again. I'm not impressed. James, the book of James says it this way. You say you have faith. I will show you my faith by my actions. So my question for you is, how are your actions? Do they align with what you say you're doing? Character is a choice. Every time you and I are faced with a, with a test, with a choice, we have to choose character. So choose wisely. Next slide. So let's talk a little bit more about character. Paul says this, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Everybody read this together. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. I don't hear you. Oh, let's try it again. There's plenty of time. Just write down the verse, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Excellent. So what is Paul saying? In your spirit, there is what? Character. Your spirit, if you are born again, you can do the, there we go. If you are born again, you already have character in your spirit. We are a spirit. We have a soul, mind, will, and emotions. We live in a what? A body. Who are you? You are your spirit. It's already there. We're working out our salvation. Where do we work it out? Not in our spirit. We're working out our salvation in our soul, our mind, our will, and emotions. We are renewing our what? Not our spirit, our what? Why? Because we have not yet realized the reality of what's already in our spirit. Renew your mind. Be transformed. Paul says this in Romans. He says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do we renew our mind? We take the word of God, we put it underneath our pillow, and we sleep on it, right? Are you sure? How do we renew our mind? By reading it, and what else? And meditating on it, right? And then what else? Studying. Studying it. And what else? Memorizing. And what else? What did James say? Do not merely listen to the word. Do what it says. How do I know that you have renewed your mind? Because I see the fruit. I see it in your actions, right? How do you know I have renewed my mind? You see it in my what? My actions. Next slide. Integrity. Everybody say integrity. Okay, I'm going to preach the next service, so I need to know now. In, Lu in Luganda, do you have the word integrity? Is there a word that means integrity? Close. Close. Okay, and then I'll I'll describe it when it's come times. Okay, what is integrity? What is integrity? This is a hard word. Glenn, you are giving us too many hard words this morning. Proverbs. Oh, let's go back. Let's go back. Sorry. Thank you. Integrity. Proverbs. The integrity of the upright. Is anybody in here upright? 
No one in here is upright. You are all have no integrity. Oh, we need to everybody just come up for prayer right now. We'll just pray for you first. Is anybody upright? I should see everybody's hands because in your spirit you are. You are upright. That is the real you. We're working on our soul. Your spirit is upright. So what is what is Proverbs saying? He says, the integrity of the upright, the integrity of the upright guides them. So let your integrity, where's your integrity? Your integrity is in your spirit. Move it from your spirit into your soul. Let that be your guide. Your, your, the fruit of the spirit comes from who? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has deposited into your spirit as it has, it's been sealed, right? Let your integrity, that part of you that is Holy Spirit that now dwells on the inside of you, let that guide you. Let that guide you. Because those who are not are duplicitous. That's a big word. That's too many syllables for me. Glenn likes very, very small words. It's easier for me to understand. That means thinking and acting two different ways. I say one thing, but I do something else. I say, Lord, let there be no corruption in Uganda, but then I do something else. Let your integrity guide you. All right, next slide. What is an integrity? Well, it's a noun. Go ahead and hit the next one. The quality of being honest, everybody say honest. honest, having strong moral principles. What are some words that go along with that? Next slide, or next uh, point. Everybody say complete. complete. Oh, everybody say complete. complete. Everybody say honesty. honesty. Everybody say trustworthy. Everybody say truthful. Is that what you are? Kind of. Thank you for being honest. <laughs> I wish I could say that I am this way all the time. I'm not. I'm working on it. I'm on a journey, right? I haven't arrived, but praise God I left. <laughs> so let's look at it again. Where does that word integrity in English come from? Everybody say integritas. This is where it came from. So way, way, way back when the, the Romans were in charge of the world, they were the superpower of the day. They had their soldiers and every morning the soldiers would all line up and they would stand in attention and the centurion would come by and he would inspect every soldier. And as the centurion came in front of you, the, the soldier would take his, his, his fist and he had all of his equipment. He had the breastplate, the belt, the helmet, the shoes, the sword, all of his equipment. He would take his fist and pound it on his breastplate. Woo! And it was, it was made of metal and it would make a sound. And he would say, Integritas. What does that mean? In Latin, Latin is what they spoke. In Roman times, they spoke Latin. It means material, wholeness, completeness, entirety. What did the breastplate protect? The heart. So if I'm in battle and I want to dispatch, I want to kill my enemy, what is the quickest way I could do that? If I have a sword or a spear, I could stab him in the... So that breastplate is what protected the heart. And they would say, I am complete. I am ready. My heart is protected. Integritas. I am honest. I am trustworthy. I am prepared. The centurion the commander would listen for that ring. You know, I used to have, many, many years ago, I had a set of keys, and on those keys, 
was this flat piece of metal. And on the four corners, each corner had a little, a little screwdriver. I could, I, could, I could come up to a screw and I could take that, but it would make a certain sound. I knew the sound of my keys because that, that piece of metal, when it, when, it, when it did that, it made a certain sound. I could recognize that sound. Somebody could have my keys on the other side of the room and I heard that sound. That's my keys. I knew that sound. No other keys sounded like my keys. And so when that centurion would stand in front of the soldier and he would say, Integritas! That would make a sound. That breastplate would make a sound. And he knew if it was complete. He knew if, if there was a crack or no cracks. It made a certain sound. Meaning, yes, it's complete. It's there. It's there to protect. I can see the soldier. He has all of his equipment on. He's ready. But you know what happened over time? There was a new group of soldiers that they formed. They were called the Legionnaires. The Legionnaires. And they didn't say Integritas. They said, Hail Caesar! Interesting. Why would they say that? What were they saying? They were saying, my allegiance isn't to my unit. My allegiance isn't to the centurion. My allegiance isn't to this code, this integrity. It was to another man. And you know what happened over time? Those soldiers, those legionnaires begin to complain, oh, this breastplate is so heavy. You know it's made of metal. It weighs so much. Would it be okay if we, if we, we didn't always have to wear our breastplate. Can we just set it down and, and then we can go out and be a soldier? And they said, okay. Then after a little more time, they used to wear those, the helmet. You remember seeing helmets, right? They said, oh, this helmet weighs too much. Wouldn't it be okay if we just leave our helmets back in, back in our rooms? It's, it, it weighs too much. It's, it's too much. Do you know what happened after time? They began to fight without their breastplate. They began to fight without their helmet. And you know what happened to the soldiers? What wasn't protected? What wasn't protected? Because their allegiance was no longer to, I'm a person of integrity. My allegiance is to some political figure, some worldly figure. And they were wiped out. Okay, next slide. We're talking about integrity. We're talking about character. Character is so important because I don't care how skilled you are. I don't, how, I don't care how, how graceful your speech is. I don't care how anointed you are. <gasps> but the gifts and callings of God are without repentance, correct. But if your character cannot sustain you where you are, you will not remain there, even though you are anointed by God. I've met lots of anointed people who have very little character. Paul says this, he says, finally, be strong in the Lord. Everybody look at your neighbor and said, are you strong in the Lord? Are you strong? And in his mighty power, Paul says this. He says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. The devil has schemes. You know where those schemes are? They're not in church. They're in the marketplace. They're in business. They're at home. They're on the way to church. They're on the way back from church. They're there in the evening. That's where his schemes are. I need a volunteer. Can I have a volunteer? Can I have a, a, a lady volunteer come stand up here? Do not, do not be afraid. I need a volunteer. Don't be afraid. Be bold. They are fearing me. I'm just, I'm just Glenn. I'm just Glenn. Come on. Up. Oh, there we go. Brave and courageous. Give her a hand clap. 
so face them. So what does Paul say? Paul says, I know this is hard for the camera, but that's okay. And by the way, if you are online, we want to greet you. I forgot to greet you. Put on the full armor of God. Do you have the full armor of God on? Are you sure? Okay, she's ready. So that you could stand against the what? The devil's schemes. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. He says it how many times? He says it twice. So that when the day of evil comes, when is the day of evil coming? Look at your watch. And is it today? Does your watch say today? Guess what? The day of evil has come. That you may be able to stand your ground. Are you standing your ground? You are? Are you sure? Okay. And then after doing everything, stand. Are you still standing? <laughs> Did she stand? Give her a hand clap. Good job. All right, you can have a seat. Did she have fear? Did you see fear in her eyes? I had fear in my eyes because I tripped. Oh no, I'm going to hit the ground. When the day of evil comes at you, the enemy is not going to be polite and said, Good morning, Sebo. Good morning, Yavo. How are you today? Are you ready for your battle? I am here to do battle with you. I hope you have put on your whole armor of God because you're going to need it. Does he say that? Does he come at you like some crazy Muzungu? Yes! What does it take to stand? Does it take skill? What does it take to stand in the, in the face of... What does it take to stand? What do you need? Do you need to have some special anointing? Do you need to, to, to have some special talent? Do you need to have the right equipment to stand? It can help. Do you notice there's two parts? Go back one. Go back one. So that you may be able to stand your ground. What does that mean? I'm ready. I have my shield here. I have my sword here. I'm ready. I'm going to stand my ground. What happens next? Battle. A fierce battle. I'm going to get pushed. My armor is going to get hit. The enemy is going to try to stab me in the heart. I hope I have a breastplate on. I hope I have integrity. My head is going to get hit. I better have a helmet of salvation on. Because the enemy is going to come at you like a flood. And having done everything to do what? What does it take? between the first time he says stand to the last time he says stand. What does that take? It takes character. It takes integrity. Are you ready for the day of battle? Because that day is here, it is right now. Next slide, or next thingy. All right, blessing or testing. Everybody say, we love you, Glenn. I feel the love. I love you too. Have you ever gone to the store? You bought something. Let's say that you gave them 20000 and they're supposed to give you $1,000 in, in balance, but they make a mistake and they give you 10000 back. Is that a blessing of God? Are you sure? Because none of you would ever say, Oh, praise God, the Lord loves me. He has blessed me. Right? It's the other churches that do that. Not, not Grace Assembly. We would never do that, right? Have you ever ridden in a taxi and they forgot to collect money from you because the taxi was very full and it was raining and there was a lot of chaos? 
and you forgot to give them your taxi fare. They forgot to collect it from you. Because in the day of battle, you need to stand and have done everything you can to stand. Integrity. Next slide. But when Daniel, Daniel's one of my favorite, favorite cha- uh, books of the Bible. If you ask me, every book of the Bible is my favorite. So I'll let you know now. But when Daniel learned, so Daniel, towards the end of his life, was promoted. He was one of three administrators, and there was other satraps there, and they hated him. So they conspired against Daniel, and they said, King Darius, pass a law that for 30 days no one may pray to any other god or any other person except for you. And Darius said, eh, that sounds like a good plan. I like it when people pray to me. So he does. So the other satraps, they were trying to trick and trap Daniel. They hated him. What was Daniel's response? He turned around and fled back to Jerusalem, right? What did he do? He stood in the day of battle. Look at what it says. He says, he learned that the law had been signed. What did he do? He goes home. He knelt down on this special occasion, right? What does it say? It says he knelt down as, that means he was in a habit. This is what he did every day. Did Daniel do anything different upon learning the law? He stood. In his upstairs room with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he prayed three times a day just as he always did. Everybody say, integritas. Uh, You're learning Latin now. Excellent. Integritas. It means integrity. Next slide. Obedience or integrity? Let me ask you this. If your boss tells you, ah, we just need to change the receipt or a voucher, let's not put that number down. Let's say it was this amount. You just do that. I'm your boss. You must do what I say. What do you do? I know what we like to say, we like to say we're going to stand, but this is a good paying job. They provide me transport, tea in the morning, lunch in the afternoon, they help me with my school fees. You don't understand, Glim, how is my family supposed to survive? And in the day of battle, stand. Next one. Do you still love me? I still love you. So, this is going to get a little bit. Iron sharpens iron. That means there's friction. That means there's heat. That means there's metal coming off. Which is integrity? Go ahead. And again. again. So tell me, you tell me, what is the culture in Uganda? Is it an honor-based culture? Honor-saving face? I must look good in front of others? Or is the priority honest, transparent truth? Uh-oh. I just heard some metal getting sharpened. This hurts, doesn't it? This hurts me a lot. Because I've been manipulated. I've been told other things that's not the truth. And it pains me because I know I don't know who I can trust. I don't know what I can trust. Because the day of battle is today, right now. It's not tomorrow. It's not in two years. The day of the battle is right now. Can you stand before your centurion? His centurion's name is Jesus. And can you put your fist, bang your, your chest, your breastplate, And can you say integritas?
Do you have white lies here? We have them in America too. Maybe they come from the devil. Maybe it's not cultural. There's no such thing as a white lie. There's no such thing as a myth truth. There's no such thing as a little lie. Either it's the truth or it's a lie. This hurts, doesn't it? Next slide. What did Jesus say? He says, I am the way, the honor, and the life. Is that what he says? He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, no one comes to the Father. No one comes to the Father unless you come through me. Well, who is me? The way, the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, are we living a life full of integrity? Next slide. Whoever lives by the truth comes into the light. Whoever lives by integrity, that integrity of the upright that guides them, whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly what is truth? Truth is honest, transparent truth. What they have done has been done in the sight of God. Let me give you a clue if something is truth or not. If you have to justify a thought, if you have to justify an action, 99.9% .9 of the time is probably wrong. And we are good. I'm good at justifying things. But God, you don't understand. I can't, I can't, I can't do what's right at work. My boss is telling me and I need this job. This job is your provision, God. You gave me this, this, this job. Justification. Go ahead. Many years ago, this person is no longer at the church. He was a member uh, at this church, and we had needed some work done. So we asked him to give us a quotation on some electrical work. And he, he quoted us a very, very high estimate. We knew it was extremely high. So my colleague said, oh, let's, let's look at this together. Let's... Because, you know, it's easy to make a mistake. Let's, and so he measured and figured out what, 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 what. And the cost was much, much lower. Some people call it a Mzungu tax. Did you know I get charged different prices? All the time. Is that integrity? You don't understand God. He's a Mzungu. He's a Westerner. He has money. He can afford it. I'm just a poor Ugandan. I thought we're all kings and priests. I thought our same dad owns the cattle on a thousand hills. But you don't understand God. Next slide. I want you to know how much I love you. Do you still love me? Okay, I just want to make sure. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by saying one thing and doing another. Next slide. Why the three C's? Why are we talking about integrity? Because when we have character, integrity, competency, we're good at what we do, chemistry, people skills, all that combined equals credibility. I can begin to speak. Go ahead and hit, go all the way through those. I can begin to speak into other people's lives. That's where transformation happens. If you make a mistake, are you defeated? No. Learn from your mistakes. I need to learn from my mistakes. Next. I think we're just about done. Yep. Let me pray for you really quick. Father God, you are good. Jesus, you said, love you. Love the Father with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. 
Teach us what that means. Help us all, myself included, to be men and women of integrity. Holy Spirit, deal with us all. You are good. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I love you. Wow.